to the full scope of prosperity part one today we are going to uh, continue our study in days of prosperity this is live your best life coaching regina sanders the bible coach and i just want to welcome you to this study and i pray that you are abundantly blessed through it and that through this study God gives you a full vision of what prosperity through him truly is. Again, welcome to our study, Days of Prosperity, the full scope of prosperity, part one. As I said earlier, I'm Regina Sanders, the Bible coach. I received my accreditation through IACCC. While accreditation is not necessary to be a life coach, I chose to become accredited because I needed to own my own value. I'm a survivor of stage three colon cancer. Our precious Lord gave me a new lease on life and I chose to live my best life and to help others do the same. I put action with this desire by becoming an accredited life coach with an emphasis on biblical foundations in life. I'm an author. I've published many books, a lot of them are ebooks, but my most recent works are available at Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, the most recent one being My Cup Runneth Over, A Survivor's Guide to Walking Through the Valley of the Shadow of Death. The one just before that was A Journey into Understanding. You can find these by searching their titles with my name, Regina Sanders, behind it. I'm a keynote speaker. I love to uh, just come out and share my testimony, share how God has blessed me. And I do this because of Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, which tells us that we overcome him, him being the adversary, because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of our testimony. Um, I'm also a book editor, a ghost writer, and a minister. I'm a wife and a mother, and these last two are my most prized accomplishments. The mission of Live Your Best Life Coaching is based upon the commission found in Isaiah chapter 61, and that is to strengthen the sickly, to heal the diseased, to bind up the broken, bring back the scattered, and seek the lost. My work is to help shed light upon your prosperous journey in life. So again, I thank you for joining me today, and I pray that the Lord blesses you through this lesson. So today we are going to continue looking at 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, and we're going to identify what it is to prosper. We're going to work to gain a vision on what prosperity looks like to you and going to help you experience prosperity first in the imagination and then bring it into your reality. So 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 in the Amplified Version says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. The BBE says, My loved one, it is my prayer that you may do well in all things and be healthy in body even as your soul does well. The WNT says, My dear friend, I pray that you may in all respects prosper and enjoy good health just as your soul prospers. My friend, it is written, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual things in heavenly places in Christ. That's in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. We likewise find 
in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2-4. through 4. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So we learn from these verses, 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, particularly that prosperity in the Greek means help along the way, a prosperous journey. It is to prosper, to succeed at everything that we do. Prosperity is more than money, and I really want you to grasp that because often that's what people immediately go to in their mind when they hear the word prosperity and they immediately think about prosperity preachers or name it and claim it but this isn't what this is about because prosperity is more than money it encompasses the entire scope and spectrum of our lives so I ask you what does prosperity look like to you when you close your eyes and you envision a prosperous life. What is it that you see? Let's keep moving. <clears throat> In 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, we see that Strong's Greek number for prosperity is number 2137. And that comes from a compound of 2095 and 3598. It means to help on the road, succeed in reaching, to succeed in business affairs, have a prosperous journey. We find that it's first mentioned in Romans chapter 1 verse 10 and it's last mentioned in 3 John chapter 1 verse 2. This Greek number occurs four times in three verses. So let's look at the first mention, Romans chapter 1 verse 10 states, always in my prayers, making request, if perhaps now, at last, by the will of God, I may succeed in coming to you. Here, succeed is used for prosper. He is praying for success in reaching the readers of the letter to have a prosperous journey. It's last mentioned in our verse of topic, 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Here, John is saying, I pray that you may succeed in reaching, succeed in your business affairs and have a prosperous journey in this life just as your soul prospers, just as your soul succeeds in all that it does because it is divinely connected to God. Think about that. Your soul contains your God spark. It's your spirit and your soul are divinely connected to God. And they're prosperous because of that God spark, because of that connection bridge that is there but it's not just there to be contained within you it's there to be seen so we are to be living a prosperous life in order to help others connect with that God spark that is in them uh, I apologize for that loud uh, notification sound I don't know what it is but let's continue. Again, looking at 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, we're going to look now at Strong's Greek number 2095. 
It's a neuter of a primary word meaning good. Good, well, or well done. What do you think of when you hear well done? What verse does that take you to? Greek number 2095 occurs eight times in six verses, and it's first mentioned in Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things, so I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. It's last mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 3. So that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. That reminds us of the Ten Commandments. The, the first commandment with a blessing is to honor your father and mother, so that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. So we see... That prosperity is connected with honor, honoring God, honoring your parents, honoring others, seeing value in others, and helping them see that value within themselves. Looking now at Strong's Greek number 3598, it means a road, a progress, the route, act, or distance, a mode or means, a journey or highway. It's first mentioned in Matthew chapter 2, verse 12. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. It is last mentioned in Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river, the Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way would be prepared for the kings from the east. <clears throat> Remember, in the previous lessons, we've learned that the way is a path of obedience in the physical realm of the creation that is inspired and compelled by Holy Spirit. So when you think about the way, think back to the fifth day of creation and the spirit of power. Now humans have a tendency to think of power as a physical strength, but spiritual power has more to do with carrying out the purposes of the Creator according to a divinely appointed path and season, or way. And this is why Jesus mandated to his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they were clothed with power from on high. What they received at Shavuot, or Pentecost, was Holy Spirit, as we see in Acts chapter 2. What they received next was the provision that they would need for the journey to the nations. John chapter 14, verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. My friend, Jesus is your means to prosperity. So what does prosperity look like to you? Provision or provision. Without vision, there is no provision. So what does your vision of prosperity look like? Can you see it? Where are you? Are you inside or outside? Describe the scene. What sounds do you hear? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it warm? If you reach out and touch it, is it textured? Or smooth? Does it have a color? If so, what color is it? What do you smell? Now taste it. What does it taste like? Is it sweet? Is it sour? Is it hot? Now why am I asking you all of these questions? 
It's because you can create the experience of prosperity in your imagination. And it is imperative to have a vision of prosperity. Because as we said earlier, without vision, there is no provision. So now, let's put our faith in action. As you've heard me say many times, prayer plus faith times action equals the result. So take a few moments. Sit quietly. Clear your mind of the task of the day. And ask Holy Spirit to give you a clear vision of prosperity. Ask Him to allow you to experience prosperity in your imagination so that you will have a clear vision of what it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like, what it tastes like. I even suggest holding your arms out to your side and I'm going to see if I can turn the video on. I don't know. Not, okay, it's not going to let me. But hold your arms out to your side. Uh, think about being in elementary school in PE class and they would have you stretch your arms out to do the circular motions. Hold your arms out to your side with your Palm, palms facing forward. Um, and as you experience this vision, just allow your arms to move as they wish. Don't even think about their movement. But I believe they will eventually come together. Now when they come together, while you're experiencing this vision in your imagination, Interlock your hands and pull them into your heart. Now, hold them there, just as if you're holding this vision to your heart until you feel it deep down in your soul, until it becomes part of you. And when you've completed this task, get your journal out and write down the vision. Write down the entire experience. Everything you saw, everything you heard, the colors, what it felt like, and relive this experience daily by reflecting upon what you've written in your journal. My friend Joseph had a dream. He faced obstacles such as his brothers being very jealous of him, deciding first to kill him. Then deciding, no, we don't want his blood on our hands. I know, let's throw him in a pit. And let's sell him as a slave. And that's what happened. He was thrown in the pit first. With scorpions and snakes and spiders and no way out. But then he was sold to travelers as a slave. And he ended up in Potiphar's house. And he was promoted. He became second in command under Potiphar. But then, tra tragedy happened again. Potiphar's wife told a lie on him and he was thrown into prison. And while he was in prison, he interpreted dreams for others. And he asked the butcher and the baker as they were being released from prison, when you go before Pharaoh, remember me, remember me. Tell him about me. But Joseph was forgotten. But you know what? Through all of these experiences, one thing that he did was he kept his dream in front of him daily. He knew that it was a vision from God that was given to him. And he held that vision. And he was promoted. And promoted again. And promoted again. Until finally, he was second in command just under Pharaoh. He had a vision which led to not only his provision in the journey of life, but for the provision of his family and his people. So I encourage you today, hold on to that vision for your provision. And for 
the ability for you to supply provision to your family, to your loved ones, to those divine encounters that God places you in. Experience the vision of prosperity and keep it in front of you daily, bringing it into your reality, your physical reality. It's there in the spiritual realm waiting for you to grab hold of it and pull it down into your physical realm. And you're going to do that with your prayers, with your faith, and with your actions. And you're going to get results. So listen, I would love to connect with you. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter. You can reach me through email. I've decided to live my best life. And I desire to help you do the same. Transitions aren't always easy. And especially if you feel like you're doing it alone. But I'm here to tell you that you're not alone. That you are valuable. You are worthy. You are loved. And I am here to help you. So I encourage you to contact me today. Uh, again, Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Pastor Regina Sanders. You can always reach me through my website, reginasanders.net. Through email, pastor.regina.sanders at gmail.com. Or through Twitter, twitter.com slash reginasanders17. Connect with me today. I love hearing from you. May the Lord bless you. May He keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you. May He surround you with His favor as a shield and bring you His peace, which surpasses all understanding. May He give you this vision of prosperity and lead you on a journey of a prosperous life. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> Now, as I told you, I'm a life coach. So I want to ask you, why would you consider hiring a life coach? Well, there's seven things that uh, I believe are important to consider when hiring a life coach. It's your confidence. It's not where you want it to be. You lack a clear vision. Or your vision is so big that you're overwhelmed. Your patterns aren't supporting your goals. You find yourself irritable. You're in a huge transition. You're craving more purpose. So why waste even more time saying no to your dreams when you can say yes to the transformation that awaits for you? Contact me today, please. ReginaSanders.net Use offer code COACHME and get 10% off of our regular prices. And listen, I look forward forward to hearing from you. Take that step today and let's see how we can work together. Again, God bless you. Thank you for being with me and I look forward to being with you again soon in our part two of this lesson. God bless you.